Public comment on items not specified on the agenda. Uh, how many cards do we have? I'd like to kind of regulate how much time we're going to be in this part of the. And while she's counting, I just want to. Oh, there's a couple more cards out in the audience. Thanks, Ms. Bender. Um, so uh, rules of uh, of governance in the Brown Act um, uh, mean that we don't we can't respond to you when you come and talk. So don't take that as personal. We're here to listen today. Okay. So. Um, and I think we're going to time, so we're going to see how many cards that we have. And 21. 21. Um, my dark side over here. Okay, so what we'll, what we'll do in the, we'll, we'll limit it to two minutes. If you can be shorter, that's great. Um, Tracy, could you time? Would that be okay? Sure. And so. Um, uh, we'll have you come, we'll have you come up and talk and if, if people are repetitive if they're already covering what you want to cover maybe just uh, give them the time and, uh, and you know, let's in the in the interest of time we can get through it so anyway so well, I have a suggestion mm -hmm. if I can make one um, I wanted to suggest for maybe ground rules that we could, I could just share with the board um, one um, speak to the issue Two, keep it civil we all have an important view to share Three, listen to others. Four, be courteous and respectful to, of others. Thanks. All right. Yeah, we're gonna do two minutes, and again, if, if you don't need the two minutes, then uh, that'd be fine. Okay, Noah Griffin. Good evening, my name is Noah Griffin. I reside in Tiburon. I've either lived or worked in Marin County since 1975, and I've raised my four children there. I've been accused of being an outside agitator, but in the words of Dr. King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I speak to the issue of changing the name of the Dixie School District. It is an anachronistic throwback to an era of slavery, bondage, and human suffering. By maintaining the name, we do a disservice to the district, the county, and the children we seek to educate. It is disingenuous to maintain the name Dixie as anything but synonymous with the Confederacy and was acknowledged as such in the Dixie School Foundation's application for landmark status. The war is over. The Confederacy does not need an outpost in Northern California. My paternal grandfather, born in 1852, was enslaved at birth, as was the woman who was to become his wife. My maternal great-grandfather fought in the Civil War for the Union with the Kentucky 115th Regiment. The South lost. That chapter is closed. I do not deny their history, but there is no need to celebrate it, to honor it, or to memorialize it outside of a museum. Let that museum be the original schoolhouse with honest acknowledgement of the name's origin and what it stood for then and what it stands for now. There should be no pride in maintaining a name that brings pain to any segment of our community. Both my parents were educators. We are missing a teachable moment. Our children need to learn to neither trivialize nor dismiss the sensitivity of others or worse, to become generationally numb to their pain. What better an opportunity than to stand up for Marin County values? Whose side are you on? Certainly the David Dukes and Donald Trumps of the world would be pleased in maintaining the status quo. But in the words of James Russell Lowell, new occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. They must ever up and onward who would keep abreast of truth. The wind of change, winds of change are sweeping the land. The name Dixie, Confederate statues and flags are being retired as we speak. We in Marin are not special to ignore or think ourselves above doing our part to keep pace with the times. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, we cannot escape history. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could you please uh, raise your hand if you're a, a voter in the Dixie District, please? Thank you. Lisa Dory. Hi, I'm Lisa Doring. I'm a 20 plus year resident of Marin County. And when we moved here, all the realtors told us this was the best <laughs> district in the county. The widest curriculum, the best performing schools. And I think that's partly because you teach so many things math, science, art, all kinds of things. But I think another thing we're teaching children here 
is to honor, respect, and remember something that represents white supremacy, terrorism, and slavery. Uh, I think uh, the name Dixie embodies and represents the Confederacy, um, and the Confederacy represents uh, those things, racism, white supremacy in this country, and we need to take a look at that and hold hands with history and make a new change uh, with something positive, choosing a better name for this wonderful school district. Um, I think uh, to do that would cause a more racially equitable outcome in this, in this area and in this county. Uh, and so I ask you to do the right thing. I'd like to comment about the recent publicity regarding the Dixie School District. As a parent who's been in this district for 10 plus years, I'm opposed to outsiders attempting to use their influence to change the name of our district. We have carried the district name for over 150 years, during which time the name has become synonymous with great administration, great teachers, and a great education. I have never heard one parent complain or make any type of connection between the name of our district and slavery. Additionally, I've never heard, heard or seen any evidence of racism within our district. While there are many great things about the Dixie School District, we are not without our challenges. These challenges and the time it takes to address them should take precedent over the time, energy, and resources being wasted with the effort to change the district's name. What issues, you may ask? As a parent, here you go. How about the myriad of construction projects we have currently underway and in the future that are going to need managing? How about the vaping epidemic? at Miller Creek? How about evaluating the new dress code that's been instituted? How about ensuring the massive turnover is going smoothly? How about keeping our school district for the residents of our district? How, um, how about weighing the desires of your constituents? If more kids want to take tech classes, add tech classes. Don't push them down to their second and third choices for their electives. After all, who's paying for the electives? It's those of us here in the district paying the parcel tax. I suggest the board, to the board that they stay in their lane and act as trustees to the school district as they were elected to do and eliminate creating controversy for none against. Thank you. Uh, Hello, my name is Jessica Freilich. I didn't come with prepared remarks. Unlike many people here, I am a resident of the district. My son went to Mary Silvera, Dixie Elementary, and Miller Creek. All the time that my son was in school, we dutifully ran to Costco to buy school supplies for the classroom. We contributed hundreds of dollars every year to Can Do and we voted for every single parcel tax even now that our son is long since graduated from the district but i have to tell you and the reason that we've voted for all the parcel taxes is because we've entrusted we we have the feeling that the dixie school board are very um good stewards of our tax money but i have to tell you that if you guys spend one thin dime on this ridiculously stupid proposal, I am going to have to question whether you really need that money the next time you come up with another parcel tax. Thank you very much. Tim Irish. Hi. I am a <clears throat> resident of Dixie. Both my children attended. I guess I should have seen the camera. We moved here from Alexandria, Virginia in 2007. And I found the name of my children's elementary school odd. Um, why would anyone name a school Dixie so far geographically and historically from the antebellum south Dix Dixie? It didn't make any sense. But it didn't take long for me to discover the sad truth behind the name. 
I'll admit that during my 13 years living in Alexandria, Virginia, I never considered the pain that those statues to fallen Southern soldiers must have caused the local African American population, community. Uh, that all changed with Charlottesville. Just as our attitudes and awareness about sexual harassment changed with the allegations against Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement, now we're, as they say, woke. Uh, and we should do all we can to eliminate racism from changing names to removing statues. Some want to claim that there isn't any racism in our community, so we don't need to change the name. Well, I was shocked to read some of the comments to Bruce Anderson on Nextdoor, the local online uh, community. I never in my life thought that I would see white people telling a black man what does and doesn't constitute racism. And the tone and anger of those posts was over the top. It was shocking. It showed me that we as a community have quite a ways to go racially. So I suggest that we change the name. If that's the one small step we can take, change the name, please. I can't change people's minds, but I can do this. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> okay. My name is Bruce Anderson. Uh, I'm local, as you can tell. <laughs> I moved here in 1986 with my three-year-old son. In 1989, after attending a private kindergarten, we went to first grade at Dixie. My first day at Dixie School, I met Mr. Lohauser. I don't think he was a doctor at that time. I may be wrong, but I don't think he was yet a doctor. I asked him, this name, it doesn't make sense to me. I've been in this area. Why is this name here? At that time, he didn't have an answer, and he said, I'll get back to you. Since that time, 1989, even though you've heard things started in 1986. Since that time, I've asked every Dixie official I've met, usually the first time I've met him, Mark, I met you when you approved Jennifer's, or when you guys voted on Jennifer to become a Dixie board member. I asked you at that meeting at Miller Creek about the Dixie name. Jennifer, I met you about a month later after you came back onto the board at a function at Dixie High School, at Dixie School as a dance or something, Dr. Lohauser introduced us together as I was talking to him about Dixie name. Marnie, I probably asked you before you were elected, and I know I've talked to you since you've been elected to the position. Alyssa, same thing. I think I talked to you before you were elected, and I know I've said something to you since you've been elected. And Brad, I've asked you so many times and talked to you so many times about this, I think you avoid me. <laughs> I love you, Bruce. I met Dr. Yashimiro last year at my grandson's sixth grade pre-opening day. I asked him. Pardon? I asked him about it, too. So the last few years, the responses have been more open and considerate, some positive and some encouraging. Attitudes are changing rapidly in this country as the country wakes up to the oppression and non-exclusiveness of Confederate symbols and Confederate names and symbols. And that is the key, equity and inclusion. Each school is starting programs that I've heard. What better subject than the history of the district and how to increase inclusion? I'll skip down. I wrote a letter. I seriously did expect a response. I have not gotten a response from the letter that I wrote last year, last uh, meeting. In the letter, I asked the board recognize the facts about the name of the district and ask the board to take note of the symbolism of Dixie name and begin a process to change it. And I'll be there. Thank you. Okay, I have terrible handwriting. Sorry about that. I didn't go to school here. <laughs> I'm a 10 year resident of San Rafael. And I, I can read. So, 
What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. John S. McCain District, Barack Obama District, Ethel Siderman District, Justice District, Gary Giacomini District, Robin Williams District, Maria B. Freitas District, James Baldwin District, Peter Bear District, Miwok District, Steve Nestle's name. <laughs> it was great. There are so many names that would bring out our best, consistent with the excellence of the school district. In terms of cost, I am sure you would be able to raise thousands of dollars for the necessary sign changes, stationary changes. The cost would be seriously, overwhelmingly defrayed. It would be a bold and wonderful move. Thank you. David Curtis. Okay, were you 94903 or 94901? One. One, thank you. Is that Curtis? okay? <laughs> yeah, but I'm just trying to keep a resident. I know, but I have categories. Is that a zip okay, code? Thank you for all the name suggestions. Uh, I'm David Curtis. I'm a, a parent. Uh, to two students in the district. Uh, my daughter attended uh, Valcito, Dixie, and Miller Creek. Now she's at Terra Linda, and my son's currently in Dixie. Um, and when I first moved here, um, and someone told me the name of the school, I was, I was also confused, and I was wondering why that name was so displaced from the Southern America. Um, and I still can't explain it, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and like or not, or if you're willing to pay for the change or not, um, that name pretty much only has negative connotations. So it's not helping us. It's a, if you're into branding, it's a terrible brand. So, you know, even if you don't want to make it about racism, let's just come up with a better name that doesn't have all this negative baggage. Um, and someone implied that we should leave the name because otherwise we're whitewashing history and, you know, people are going to know that the Civil War happened. They, they're, they're, there are plenty of other opportunities to get that information. Um, and, and right now, I can't, you know, I can't explain it to my kids, really. Why, why is that? And, and the school sometimes cautions them and tells them, you know, it's really okay, you should be proud of it and stuff. It's hard to be proud of that name. And we're going to pay for the change. It's not a money issue. Don't make it about that. And don't use that as an excuse. Um, and I, I strongly support the change, and, and, and it should have happened a long time ago. And I don't, you know, let's just do it and move on to more important things. Thank you. Hi. My name is Christopher Reeder. I've taught music in the district for the past nine years, eight years, sorry, I can read, actually, it's in the name, and have been a teacher for 21 years. Our whole profession is based on the belief that knowledge transforms us for the better. And with evidence-based knowledge that the district's name is an indefensible artifact rooted in racist history, we have an opportunity to do better, to be better. It's our responsibility as educators. Hostile environments inhibit learning, and at the end of the day, this is about kids, the education they receive in our district, and fostering an inclusive environment in which all students feel welcomed and supported. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, racial equity and restorative justice for a second. If, as frankly, a majority white district in a majority white county, we can evolve our understanding on this issue, it would send a powerful message to our students and neighbors. When our sisters and brothers who are people of color talk about the harm done, we need to sit with that and take it seriously and make a change. We talk about restorative justice with our students, right? And our responsi uh, responsibility to walk the talk. That's what restorative justice looks like. And for those of us who are troubled by the current political climate around the treatment of people of color and immigrants in this country, this is a thing we can do that will help. And there's a wider cultural context here. As people have mentioned, Confederate monuments are coming down all over the South. Last month, a school district in Alabama ended the practice of their band playing Dixie at football games. 
Alabama. And if South Carolina can take the Confederate flag off of their state house, us Californians can take Dixie off of our school letterhead. This is the perfect time to do this. We don't really need to wait for a more convenient time because the time is now. Thank you for your attention. Um, my name is Sherry Bakaria. I'm the orchestra teacher for the district, and I've been teaching here for nine years. I don't live in the district, but I've been teaching here for nine years. Um, I got laid off in Livermore about, well, in 2006, uh, 2008 when the uh, recession happened. And when I was looking for names and I saw Dixie, I thought it was really strange. I lived in West Texas. <laughs> I live in Odessa, Texas. I could maybe see it happening there, although I would like it, but not here. I'm going to read a letter to you that was written to the Change the Name Committee from Mark Brilliant, who's the director of the UC Berkeley's American Studies program and professor of history. As far as I can tell, the research you provided me with is completely credible, standard fair historical stuff to demonstrate the connection between the Dixie Schoolhouse and by extension, Dixie School District on the one hand, and the Confederate States of America during the Civil War on the other hand. It's hard to imagine that anyone in 1864, when the schoolhouse was constructed, would have thought Dixie referred to anything other than the, uh, the CSA, Confederate States, as the sources you've unearthed confirm, including the recollection of James Miller's very own granddaughter. Sure, it would be nice to have something from James Miller himself, but I don't see any reason to doubt this bit of oral history testimony for Miller's granddaughter conveyed in the application to get the Dixie Schoolhouse added to the National Registry of Historical Places. Mrs. Light, who was James Miller's granddaughter, stated that her grandfather, not only not being a man to turn down a challenge named the building on a dare, Marin County in 1864 was hotly pro-Northern, and the fact that several gentlemen from the South had constructed the first schoolhouse prompted someone to dare James Miller to name the school Dixie, and so he did. More generally, I'm no expert on the etymology of Dixie, but from what I've read, and I'm sure you have too, the prevailing view seems to be that it originally comes from Dixon, as in the Mason-Dixon line, and refers to the territory south of the Mason-Dixon line. Later in 1859, the term was popularized in a minstrel song, which became the de facto national anthem of the Confederacy during the Civil War. Again, it defies the imagination to think that anyone in 1864 of all years would have thought Dixie referred to anything other than the Confederate States of America. Throughout the U.S., including the South, Confederate monuments are coming down, Dixie School District should follow these leads by changing its name. And if there's any doubt on what this name actually means, look up slave ships and look up Emmett Till and see those pictures of what they did to human beings. That's what the name represents to some of our presidents. Howdy, my name is Jeff Durham, and you heard me say howdy. Uh, perhaps I can offer a little bit of a perspective here. I am a parent of a Dixie, uh, Dixie student, and have been so for the past uh, four years or so. Uh, it's kind of interesting. My, my daughter and I share only one thing in common. Well, I guess we share, <laughs> besides family. And that is we both grew up in Dixie. Uh, I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Where, that, where the name really meant something, and I could see its effect on the ground. I grew up in the era of busing, when I could see the effects of this mindset on the ground. Segregation, absolutely. Confederate, and I use the word pride in quotes, I could see the effects of this on the ground in people's hearts directly. In this world, we don't often have a chance to do something good immediately in the present moment. This is our chance and this is the time. I don't want my darling daughter to grow up in the kind of Dixie I grew up in. Please make that happen.
Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Um, my name is Jonathan Eldridge. Uh, I am a resident. I have the right zip code. My daughter goes to Valcito, uh, where she's a, a kindergartner. Um, we've lived in the district for a while now, and I work in Marin County, um, also in education. Uh, so, and as an administrator, I appreciate the difficult task that boards and, and administrators have. Um, I'm also here on behalf of my wife, who is at home with our daughter this evening. Um, she actually has a PhD in sociology and teaches uh, at a college. Um, and a lot of what she teaches is about symbolic racism, which is also not coincidentally known as symbolic violence. And for those of us with privilege, that probably seems a little over the top. But that's because we have privilege. As uh, I would also like to say I have a degree in history, and so I appreciate the history lesson we just received because I also learned about uh, Dixie and uh, Whistling Dixie being the anthem for the Confederacy and the heart of Dixie actually referring to the Confederate States. Um, and whether or not Dixie School District is named for that really isn't the point. Uh, the point is that that is what it is commonly associated as. There's a reason that parents don't name their kids Adolf. There's a reason that the restaurant that some of us, I'm sure, as kids went to, Sambo's, doesn't exist anymore. It's because it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate because it's hurtful uh, and because I think we finally learned that. I also want to say for a moment that slavery uh, was not only about owning people as property and committing atrocities on them. It was also about the intentional decision to keep those people uneducated. And if that doesn't speak to the importance of this issue in this school district, then I don't know what does. That should not be lost on any of us, and it should make this decision a morally obvious one. But what about tradition? What about it's been this way? What about we've lived with this for years? That's not really what it means to us. Well, I don't think any of us want to go back to any of the traditions we knew in education. And I, I think I'm probably of roughly the same age of a lot of people in the room. And when I was growing up, we didn't know the term homophobia. We just perpetuated it on every kid who, who didn't, uh, who didn't uh, act the way we thought they, they should. Um, racist names, uh, formal and informal segregation. So I'll close with this. To those of us with privilege, and I certainly, most certainly, I'm one of those people, we need to check that and understand the insidious nature of the tradition. And tradition is also code in many places for white supremacy. And it shouldn't be here. We should be better and care more about our neighbors and children than to make privileged excuses and fail to act. Because after all, as we all know, in education, where our kids are watching, inaction is powerful action and makes clear our values. Thank you. My name is Deborah Taub, and I am also a resident of Marinwood, not a um, paid outside agitator, uh, not at all. So I'm a 20-plus year resident of Marinwood. My son attended Dixie School, Miller Creek Middle School, and Terra Linda High School. He then went on to attend and graduate from UC Berkeley, and he's living downtown in San Diego. We moved to this area because of its natural beauty and excellent public schools. Throughout the years my son was in school here, we deeply appreciated and took part in what we found to be a very caring and child-focused community. I talked to my son recently because I think you need to hear from former students who attended Dixie School and what they feel about this issue. And he said, um, to quote, as someone who attended Dixie School, I had no clue what the name Dixie was associated with. Having a school named Dixie basically teaches kids that the name isn't worth learning about or caring about. I'm ashamed of having, a, having gone to a school with that name. It was so contradictory to what the school stands for. The name conditions kids to have a false understanding of its meaning and fails to nurture the curiosity and motivation to understand the harm it creates. We want our children, and I think I can speak for all of us in this room, 
that we want our children to gain through education a full range of knowledge about self, others, and the world. That's not very controversial. And yet, in keeping the Dixie name, we are, however inadvertently, teaching and passing on a legacy of indifference and denial about the meanings and implications of the name that so many people have already spoken about. And despite, and I would add, because of the impacts of segregation in our county, in our Marin County, as evidenced by the 2017 Race Count study, which found Marin to be the most segregated, racially disparate county in California, I think <coughs> we want our kids to develop empathy and take an active role in contributing to just, caring, and safe communities for all of us. We create accessibility for members of our community, I'm almost done, who are disabled based on those very values, not on whether there are enough disabled students or teachers to warrant our care in the same way the ongoing harm done to African American community members cannot be quantified. We already have knowledge as evidenced by tonight's comments of that harm. I truly believe we're a community who deeply cares, especially about our children, and that by renaming the school district with a name that really reflects our shared values, we can join with others in leading the way towards more justice and equity in Marin, and join as well with the many other communities around the country that have chosen to divest themselves of symbols of the Confederate South. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Tamala Fish. Just to be clear what side I'm on, I have extras if anybody wants one over here too. Uh, I am a homeowner in San Rafael. My son is 15 and is now going to um, a special program in San Marin. I'm very proud of him. I am not, I did not come to Dixie School, but I did come from another school that changed its name and survived. Uh, my son's school used to be called St. Mark's and now it's called Mark Day. That happened three years ago. I'm just going to repeat it real slowly again so everybody can take it in for a minute. St. Mark's changed their name to Mark Day three years ago. Everybody survived. Everybody. <laughs> <coughs> Why did they do that? Because the name really didn't showcase what the school was anymore. It was a good school. It is a good school. Dixie was and is a great school. Everybody knows that. Nothing in this change the name is about the school itself. But you know what? It could be a better school. It could be a better school for all the reasons the people before me have spoken. Because whether you're aware of it or not, Marin County is the most racially segregated and disparate county in the entire state of California. And you know what? We're not going to be able to hide that in this room. People know that. It's out there. We're worse than Orange County. Let that kind of sink in for a second. Right? And why is that? How does that happen? It happens in little tiny ways like this, where there's a school name named Dixie. And it's a great school. But how many black teachers, how many excellent black students, how many diverse kids are you going to get in here with a name like Dixie? Do you really have to think that it's easy for people of a different history than yours to just simply forget it, overcome it, and just go ahead and go with it because you don't want to spend, you know, five more dollars in getting to New Jersey? The money isn't the problem. I understand this has been tried twice before and they actually came up with all the money. So the money is, is just an excuse. All right? You know what's not an excuse? You know why I'm here even though my son went to Mark Day? I saw it. I'll be quick. Thank you very much for understanding. I do social media for a living. I'm not even going to tell you the comments, but this gentleman who stood up earlier, when you see what's written about this name change on Facebook, when you see what's written about this on Nextdoor, you should be ashamed. You should be sickened. Your children are going to school in a place and read these comments. What are you doing to them? Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bruce. You in a while. Um, I'm Ruth Carter. I've been a resident of Marinwood for 36 years. I'm actually on the oversight committee for Measure B for the Dixie School District. And when I say that name, it sort of catches in my throat. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what other people said, but I do want to make a few points. Um, some of the comments on next door talked about, oh, this is just po about political correctness. I don't think it is. I think this is about the prevalence of racism in our society, much of which is underneath and is not spoken about openly. We have an opportunity to make a change now, not to rewrite history, but to right a wrong from our dark past. I am a first generation American. My parents were escapees from the Holocaust, and a lot of their family was wiped out during the Holocaust. How would you feel if your school district was called Auschwitz School District? I would be appalled, and I think we should all be appalled about something like this school district, which is a wonderful group of people and teachers and principals and school board to have that name as an albatross around their neck. I urge you, I beg you, please write this wrong now. Good evening. Um, I moved to Marin 42 years ago because my parents wanted me to be in a better school district. We lived in Richmond, um, and I'm raising my kids here now. Um, in Marin, we believe in community, in inclusion, in safety for families, individuals, and children. The name Dixie has many negative connections, as you've heard already, conjuring up the enslavement of African Americans and other racist practices, policies, and ideas. I ask you to imagine that someone has just used a terribly offensive and repulsive name to refer to you or someone that you love. Imagine that when you try to talk to them about it, about the hurt, the pain, the suffering, and anger you feel, they merely say that wasn't their intention. Does their intention change how you feel? Does it change the impact that this has on you? Not likely. Please imagine the impact the name Dixie has on our community. The name and impact are not in alignment with our community values. Therefore, I ask you to really take this seriously. It's not about money. It's about people. It's about who we want to be as a community, that we all want to support each other and say, racism has no place here. Names and symbols mean things. Please change the name. Thank you. name evokes nostalgia and myth. When my husband Clifford Gould and I bought our house in 2002, we were informed of the myth that the, this coveted name, Dixie, made our home worth infinitely more than one with a more pedestrian name like Tam Union, pun intended. The myth to me brought cognitive dissonance. When I was told that a school and a school district in Northern California carried the name Dixie, I was shocked. I grew up in the South. I spent 28 years in Texas. I sang Dixie at pep assemblies and thought nothing of it. It was just a fun, upbeat song. Years later, I came to understand the meaning of, in Dixie land, I'll take my stand to live and die in Dixie. Um, I'm sure there are others who are even now as naive, as oblivious, as untouched by the meaning as I was as a child. That is not to call them racists. However, 
among those who even now claim that the Dixie name is harmless, benign, named after a girl, etc., etc., when informed that there is no historical record supporting that alternative history, and there is sufficient evidence that the name, in fact, refers to the Confederate States of America, they fall back on nostalgia, money, and myth. There is no magic conferred by the name Dixie, which makes the teaching illustrious and the students brilliant, athletic, and successful. The school district will continue to thrive under any name as long as its parents, teachers, and board maintain their current commitment to excellence. As Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So what is the reason for changing the name of this rose? The question is one of benefit versus harm. No one particularly benefits from the name Dixie, but many whose associations with the name recall a place in which thousands fought to keep the rights and privileges of owning other people, which included the right to overwork, to starve, to imprison, to torture, to rape, and even to kill those owned will suffer when seated in a house which recalls, honors, and glorifies that place. Not only those children who are descendants of slaves, but other children and other homeowners who are pained and ashamed when asked to associate themselves with that name, who recognize that we are still dealing with the legacy of slavery. The only harm which anyone can claim from changing the name is one of finance. But when challenged with the possibility that funds can be raised privately, those insisting on the old name fall back on nostalgia and myth. It's time to embrace compassion over commerce, to recognize history over hype, to step up to the plate and do the right thing. Thank you. I'm Alex Morales, I'm a graduate of the Calcedo and Miller Creek. I believe that the Dixie School District must change its name in order for it to live up to its motto of moving ahead for our student success. With name Dixie, the district will forever be shackled to the horrors of the Confederacy. Nothing can wear the name of Dixie and not carry with it the shame of slavery or institutional racism that has persisted to this day. By choosing not to rename the school district, each of you is choosing to embrace the races and white supremacist ideals associated with Dixie. For those who will see the association between the term Dixie and racism as a stretch, but just Google image search the word Dixie, and you will see the vile word, the vile world the term continues to represent today. Middle school and high school students like me are coming of age in a time period where white supremacists march holding Confederate flags, the symbol of Dixie, while singing the Dick racist Dixie song to show their allegiance to their racist ideals. I know we have all seen the footage. Some are choosing to remain ignorant of the world we live in. As a person of color, being able to ignore racism is not a privilege I have, nor one I wish to possess. I want to be on the right side of history and among those leading change. The question now becomes, will you choose ignorance over action? Are you willing to use your power and privilege to change the name and lead the community in the hard work of ending racism? Thank you. things I'd like to talk about, so I'll try and make my first comments be brief, which are about the name change. I disagree with a large portion of the people here, uh, and I think that this should be decided by the people that live here and not by people from outside. So however we choose to do that, I really agree with a lot with what Nick has said before, and the woman sitting next to him, I can't remember her name, but again, I really believe, I don't believe that it should be changed for various reasons. I believe we teach inclusion and equity, and I, I don't believe the name is something we need to focus on. But the other thing I'd like to talk about is what is going on. I keep hearing by one particular board member the word transparency. I hear it over and over again out of this board member's mouth. And then what we see on Facebook and then on the news is them representing themselves as a Dixie School Board member and saying, and it looks like to the public that this is the entire Dixie School, that she's speaking for the Dixie School District, and she's not. Marnie Glickman, you talk about transparency over and over again 
but since July, you have been on your Facebook, you've been on Twitter, you've been stirring the pot, getting all these people together, and then you went on the news on Friday night with the word Dixie School Board under your name. You, are, you were elected by your constituents to represent them. And I'm pretty sure what I've been hearing in the community is you're not representing all of them. To be an ally against racism? Excuse me, you're not supposed to speak. I respected you. I didn't speak up when anybody else was speaking. So I expect the same respect. So if you choose to have your name out there, do not put it with the Dixie School District. It is not, that's not why you were put in office. And I know a lot of people would like to see you removed from office right now. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mercy Chu. Mercy Chu. I'm not used to um, these meetings or anything, but the issue came up and I wanted to uh, say my piece. And I think um, the, there are strong opinions on both sides, and I understand that people have very strong feelings towards the name. Um, I'm concerned with the practicality of all. Um, my son was diagnosed with autism um, when he was four, and then we went to the public school system to find out that he was not able to get the help because funds are limited and that he has, um, he has to meet really, really tight requirements in order to get that help. So I feel like if this, if this name change is so important that other people would want to put their money towards this, all for it. And I don't want anybody to feel not included. I'm Asian American. I completely understand. Um, issues of racism and I don't want anyone to feel that um, their opinion is not important. Um, I have opinions too, but I do think that um, the money is an issue and I just would like the board to uh, really come to a point where they would be able to put it to a vote for the residents that pay the taxes and want to you know, help allocate the money in the right way. Um, but yeah, everybody's uh, vote would matter in that sense, and it, that's all I wanted to say. Paul Brunel. Hey guys. Oh. So I had a, some stuff prepared, and I'm kind of glad I listened and I'm going later because I want to change what I was going to say. Um, or not change, but just alter it a little bit. Um, I've lived here for 20 years. My kids have gone through the district. Uh, they're both at Terralinda now. Um, and I know that there are people who have lived here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years who are second, third generation. Their parents, their grandparents were teachers, students, etc., etc. Um, full disclosure, my national politics lean pretty hard to the left. So what's interesting is, is that I probably agree on a national level with a lot of people who are speaking here. It's just that on this issue, I don't. And my concern is, when I see what happened on next door last week, which there was a lot of mudslinging both ways. My concern here is that there's a wedge issue now being driven into this community that wasn't here before. I don't know what's going to happen, but it saddens me to watch this issue come up in a community that doesn't deserve to be framed in a certain way. I understand people want to seize on tr the Trump effect, right? I get it. But to try to frame that down into this community is wrong, in my opinion. That's not who we've been. We're not in some place where trucks are driving around with Yosemite Sam stickers on it, you know, firing their gun with a Confederate flag. That's not what Marinwood Terralinda is. It's not what it's ever been, from what I understand. So do we really want to march down a road 
of spending potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars, or whatever it ends up being, and I, and I disagree that money's not an issue. It's an issue. We've got real problems in the school district now. We've got kids hooked on vaping and juuling in Miller Creek. My daughter said that half of the kids that she graduated from Miller Creek with are hooked on vaping and juuling. It's getting worse. Do we want to spend the money, the time, the effort on something like this, or do we want to help the kids who are there now? My opinion is we help the kids now. Noah, I don't know you, but that quote about this being a Confederate stronghold or a Confederate outpost, that's really offensive to me, and I'm a liberal. Okay, I'm a liberal, that's, a, that's offensive to me. And it's offensive to a lot of the people who grew up here and who are second and third generation. So what I see is a lot of dividing, not uniting. And whatever happens will happen, but I really worry about this issue boiling over and becoming and a line in the sand being drawn that if you're not for this petition or you're not for this name change, you're bad. You support racism. No, please, no. Don't do that. Don't label me or anybody else as having white privilege or being racist just because I don't necessarily support the name change. Please, we have better things to be doing. everyone. Um, I see a lot of great teachers and friends here in this room. So this is my first time to speak publicly and, and uh, forgive me if I'm a little nervous. Put my glasses on since I can't see. Um, since racism has been asserted here, I agree that slavery and Jim Crow were one of the worst evils perpetrated by human beings. It is truly evil. But the question now is we have people living here in our neighborhood who have not committed those sins. Do we, have, do we somehow remove or punish our community for the sins of their fathers? And is it the best thing to do is to teach our entire generation of minorities, blacks, Asians, or whatever, that America is, is racist? I don't feel that. Are they bigoted? I don't think so. I've never felt it. I've, I've been living here since I was, been coming here in the, in the state since I was in fifth grade. My kids don't feel it. Um, the, the insinuation that minorities are perpetual victims hurts them. I believe it's false. It's backwards. As a Catholic Filipino, I've been, I have, we have a long history of oppression. For 300 years, we were oppressed by Sp Spaniards. My parents were involved. I mean, my grand-grandparents. I'm not that old. <laughs> um, and we have a long history of oppression, even by the Japanese people. And I have plenty of Japanese friends. I even love their food. Um, people of every race and color were enslaved and enslaved by others. In fact, white people were still being bought and sold as slaves in the Ottoman Empire decades after blacks were freed. But this, but this, this, does this mean that as a community should expect that we're owed? I don't think so. Does it mean that I want everything and anything removed that is influenced by King Philip? I don't think so. Should I feel threatened, offended about a Japanese battleship named after our superintendent? I don't think so. It's inappropriate to teach our children that somebody owes you something as a general rule that has not been done anything to you. I think that if we have done something to you or they have, then they owe you. But if they haven't done anything to you, then they don't owe you anything. And if you build an ideological system based on you have to rectify mistakes made by your grandfather, then we're never going to get past this. We'll Armand, never get beyond it. Armand? Yes. So oh, two minutes? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll just close it up. Then that's it. Okay. I just want to say, 
I don't, I disagree with this. I think this is a great community and I appreciate everybody's time. of Dixie soccer dads back there. Uh, I'm actually the centrist among them. I should point out that uh, you're seeing opposition to this idea from both the left and the right, literally, back there with Paul and Armand. Uh, anyway, my name's Peter Henry. I'm a Dixie dad. I've lived here for 15 years in the neighborhood, still live here in the neighborhood. My daughters went through the district. And here's the interesting thing. I just want to make a couple of personal observations about this issue and then a pragmatic one to sort of cement the perspective on this. First of all, I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland, right above the Mason-Dixon line. My dad marched with MLK. So I do have some clue about what it means to be part of a group that has experienced discrimination and moved on from it. So in 2003, when my wife and I moved to the district, it never even dawned on me that Dixie was that Dixie. Just never dawned on me. And the reason was that I was raised to think different. That I got to see firsthand the speech where MLK said, we're interested, we're looking forward. He looked forward to a time where people were judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. In other words, what we think, not necessarily what is said. And I get and understand personally that there are some expressions and some terms that are more currently offensive or acrimonious. But that's not the point here. The point here is that since moving here, this is not, has been nothing but a welcoming and open community. And that's who we are in 2018. That's who we were in 2003 when we moved here. This is not 1864, and it's not 1964 even. This is 2018, and this community reflects the liberal and accepting and open and welcoming ideals that we would hope to live in. So now, what does that mean then? And I'll observe one interesting thing about the folks who are in favor of this name change. They put together a website in which they put a quote that I find very ironic by Maya Angelou, and I'll just read it quickly. We cannot change the past, but we can change our attitude toward it, uproot guilt and plant forgiveness, tear out arrogance and seed humility, exchange love for hate, thereby making the present comfortable and the future promising. Why is that ironic? because she wasn't talking about words. She was talking about how we think and how we act. So now, the pragmatic point. The one thing I do know after 15 years here is that the district is constantly in a budget crunch. Has anyone stopped to think about what we can do with the resources, with the money, because this is 2018, not some other time, to actually help our students more? Think about it. A rough calculation of this name change would run into the tens of thousands of dollars. If anyone thinks that that doesn't make a, a difference to this district and to our kids, they're mistaken. So for that, for the pragmatic reason and for the personal reason about who this community is, this community, not outsiders telling us what we should think, but this community from the inside is, I'm strongly opposed to putting our resources to this effort at this point. Thank you. Oh, I had to put my name in. No. Oh, you're correct. Sorry, I didn't realize we were speaking both issues. Two minutes of time. Well, I'm going to start off by telling you I went to the Sausalit Art Festival and I saw the most beautiful piece of art. It's in your heart, and that's where I want to speak to right now. That's where the Almighty Kingdom resolves. <coughs> And loudly I proclaim by the authority of the great spirit almighty Adonai Elohim to damn the profusions of illusions. Racism is what human beings do to the other sentient races. 
And no one is more hopelessly enslaved than those who believe themselves to be free. And all wars are usurious bankers' wars. And we're told, at least in part, that that had something to do with freeing the slaves. And if that's true, how many Caucasians died? So let's not make this about color of skin. We're all the same race in this room. If we had a, a whale and a horse, it'd be three races. You know, there's a shining angel named Satan who maintains deceptions and hate. And he wants people to be divided and ashamed and all those kind of things. That's not who we are. We're the most powerful people on the planet. You're in one of the most blessed places on the planet. They say Israel is a promised land, and it's true, but it's not a speck of dust across the sea. It's also known as Ariel, which means the world. America represents the world, and Northern California, pardon my French, is the shit. We are it. Northern California, and the heart of the promised land is the North Bay. And there's really true reasons for all this. We're all slaves to lawyers and bankers serving mammon. Serving two masters maintains all disasters and Sataniel's backgammon. I've shared with you about the freedom for Leonard Peltier. His bloodlines are of the Tzalagi, the lost tribe of the city of David, the Cherokee. And the moment he's set free by our 40-day strike, which walks our own children into the promised land, it frees the U.S. Constitution, which is a beautiful document. I could spend an hour on it. That's too much here. I'll finish with this. <clears throat> as you do, language is important, and, and like I explained, race, and as you do unto the least of me, you do unto me, was a, a statement given to the, uh, by the uh, great carpenter sage. <laughs> And that was always about animals. I am Peter. I am keeper of the keys. So too the command placing the world to its knees. The power is in our heart. We have no strikes in this country worth talking about since 1970. And certainly not one for freedom. Because none of us are free. We never have been. But we have this time and place with a smile on our face. By an almighty command to take the promised land by the 40 day mystical magical walk. That opens the whole deal. So I'm here to seal the deal and make it real. I can only do it with more than just your appeal. It's got to be your heart and an almighty action because we are the most beautiful faction. Thank you for blessing me. your time again. Hi again, guys. Um, I'm going to speak as an individual and not as the Dixie Teachers Association president, but I wanted to just say that I had the honor and privilege to go to the National Educators Association Representative Assembly this summer. I was elected to go. Um, and I just wanted to read one of the resolutions that we passed. This is with about 10,000 educators from across the country who were all also elected to go. And I just wanted to read the, one of the resolutions that was passed. White Supremacy Culture. The National Education Association believes that in order to achieve racial and social justice, educators must acknowledge the existence of white supremacy culture as a primary root cause of institutional racism, structural racism, and white privilege. Additionally, the association believes that the norms, standards, and organizational structures manifested in white supremacy culture perpetually exploit and oppress people of color and serve as detriments to racial justice. Furthermore, or further, the invisible racial benefits of white privilege, which are automatically conferred irrespective of wealth, gender, and other factors, severely limit opportunities for people of color and impede full achievement of racial and social justice. Therefore, the association will actively advocate for social and educational strategies fostering the eradication of institutional racism and white privilege perpetuated by white supremacy culture. And that was just a resolution that was passed that I thought should be read into these minutes for today. So, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ruby Wilson, and uh, I grew up in the South, in the segregated South, went to segregated schools and segregated places. Um, went on to uh, college and university and moved to California in 1971. Moved here to Marinwood. So I've been here longer than I think most of you. So in 1971, we moved here. And the reason we moved here is that my husband was offered a job 
And he came out and bought the house in Marinwood before I even saw it. So I came to a house that I didn't, even, I hadn't seen before. But long story short is that um, I have three grown children who attended schools here in the Dixie School District. Um, I have been in education taught here in the county. Over 30 years I've been an educator and a principal. Um, when we bought the house, I had no idea that the name of the school district was Dixie. I don't think I would have allowed, and I, I use that term strongly, my husband to buy a house in the Dixie School District. But he bought it, he didn't know it either. So it wasn't until I came here that I realized that it was called the Dixie School District. And I would like to very much support changing the name. And as one of the speakers said, to change your name does not change the system. Uh, another thing that I have observed is that when I'm looking in the paper and I see houses up for sale, they say, in the distinguished Dixie School District. I have informed all three of my grown children that when I'm gone and they decide to sell my house, do not say it is in the Dixie School District. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank everybody, all the speakers for tonight. Thanks for coming, both sides, and uh, informing us. And um, we'll take it to our next uh, our next uh, step here. So. Um, and again, I, I appreciate the, uh, the the feedback and the um, the uh, passion with which everybody presented today. So thanks for taking the time to come to our meeting.